Hello guys and welcome to another MK Mobile team review and today we are talking about the Ronin team. Everything that you need to know about the Ronin team, of course, when it comes to my stance on it, my perspective on the Ronin team, which I regard as one of the riskiest teams in the game because, let's face it, Ronins are fun to play, they do a lot of damage, but they don't really excel at defense. So let's put them to the ultimate test. Okay guys, since I'm producing literally one um, team review per year, I won't be following a strict format. When it comes to running team, I will start with the most important thing in my opinion. And this important thing, of course, is the talent tree. In a lot of cases, people want to go all in attack. They just want to disregard defense. But when it comes to the running team, guys, in my opinion, you have to forget about the offense section of your talent tree. And the reason for that is simple. Ronins deal extraordinary amount of damage. They don't require anything that boosts their damage because it doesn't matter whether you deal 300k damage or 500k damage, whoever eats that damage is going to die unless he is a boss. And this is a very, very good time to mention that the big majority of this review will be playing Ronins in survival mode, not against bosses. Against bosses is a total different story and I don't really have time to cover both. And it really, really depends on your on the bosses you are facing, on the equipment the bosses have and so on and so forth. So once again, we are focusing on survival mode. And this is the reason why I believe that talents is really, really important. When it comes to offense, I only put some points in precision. Precision is a must have for every single talent build, in my opinion. When it comes to offense, I have points all the way to Shinnok Teaching and Revenant. Revenant is a must, a really, really important talent. Shinnok Teaching, it really depends on your gameplay. And when it comes to support, I have uh, Mongoose stance has spec up tactics, really important, and combat veteran. And now, I will start with the talents that I believe uh, that are must, that you must have them if you want to play successful restaurants. The first one, we are starting from the offense section, I already mentioned precision, extra damage, extra power generation thanks to the combo ender, really, really useful talent. You should have it 100%. The next one is intimidating presence, reduces the unblockable uh, chance reduction, and that's really really important for the Ronins, especially for a certain character who is called Ronin Kenshi, whose passive actually gets triggered if he blocks an attack. So you don't want your block to be broken. This talent is really really important for the Ronins. The next talent that is a must is a ghost armor. So basically this talent gives you um, power if you're taking critical damage and I'll let you know in a second why this talent is so important. And uh, Revenant, another must if you're playing as Ronins. Remember guys, the Ronin team, they don't have any defensive mechanism, they don't have shields as the Cold War team, they don't have Strike Force Scorpion as a Strike Force team, they don't have MK11 Sub Zero and as, as the MK11 team, they don't even have chance to evade like an assassin team. They are glass cannons, so you have to have pretty good defense. And Revenant is um, a very important part of it. Shinnok's teaching, it is up to you, but also I noticed that it gives me pretty, pretty, let's say, easy time against certain teams if I'm lucky enough to trigger the Shinnok's teaching. And uh, when it comes to the support, the Mongoose stance is up to you, but since you are tagging in and out very often, I believe it's pretty important together with the uh, Spec Op Tactics, which is another must talent for the Ronins, you have to tag in and out often. If you keep one character tagged in all the time, that's not really good. You are going to get wrecked sooner or later. This doesn't mean that you cannot finish a battle just by using Ronin Kenshi. You can, but in a lot of cases, especially if you are facing certain characters, you have to tag in and out, otherwise you're lost. And the next very important talent is the Combat Veteran, reason being Ronin Kitana has the highest toughness in the game. This talent literally makes sure that if the enemy is critching, Ronin Kitana doesn't take any damage. And quite the contrary, she takes a little bit of damage, but she actually takes power. <laughs> she gets power in the process, which is amazing. So this is the reason why Combat Veteran and Ghost Armor are a must for a running team. Remember, the offense is not really important. It doesn't matter whether you do 300k damage or 500k damage. The only place where it matters is against bosses, but once again, this review will be focusing on survival mode and not battle against bosses, because all battles against bosses 
are really different. It all depends on the equipment on the boss and so on and so forth. So I cannot really make a good review on how to be generally good as Ronin's against bosses because it really, it really depends on the specifics on the boss fight. So this is all that I have to say about the talent section. Remember, the key lies in defense and support for the simple reason that Ronin's when they are together deal insane amount of damage anyways. Alright guys, after we established which are um, the best talents for the Ronin team, it is time to talk about the characters one by one. And the first character of the Ronin team to step foot into this video is going to be Ronin Kitana, who scored 72.3 in our individual review. In the Ronin team, in my opinion, she can be an opener, a disabler, a tank, and sometimes a fighter. The reason why she isn't the greatest fighter is because she cannot kill enemies by using special one, so she has to rely either on her basic attacks or her special tool. That's not really the greatest thing to be said about a fighter. However, at the same time, Ronin Kitana is probably the strongest tank in the game if you give her specific talents. We already established that she has the highest toughness in the game. So, she requires two talents in order to shine. The first one is Combat Veteran and the second one is Ghost Armor. Why? Because if you give her toughness equipment and if she has those talents to begin with, she doesn't take any critical hits. So the secret of playing Ronin Kitana lies in the fact that she requires specific talents and specific equipment. And for example, if you happen to have the Killer Jacket at Good Fusion, it doesn't have to be maxed out, but if it is maxed out, the Ronin Kitana is one of the safest openers ever. But if you don't have it maxed out, let's say you have it Fusion 5, Fusion 6, you can still use it in Ronin Kitana and she'll be great. Also, the Storm Hat is very good equipment on her. The Secret Scrolls, this is a Tower Uncommon piece, which is also pretty great for Ronin Kitana. In general, every single piece that gives toughness and her bladed fan so that she has block breaking chance and so that she can ha uh, have a chance to heal on her special one, which is the ability that she uses the most. Even though her special two got buffed and in a lot of cases you can use it to finish off uh, an enemy, but in the general case you'll be using her special one because you won't have the opportunity to get to special two without any issues. So basically this is one of the greatest strengths of Kitana. She can be an amazing tank, basically you can take a full special to of Assassin Jade, and if it crits, then Assassin Jade is not going to do any damage to you whatsoever, and she's going to fill your power bar, and that's really awesome. Alright guys, it is time to talk about Ronin Takeda. Ronin Takeda scored 72.2, almost the same amount of points compared to Ronin Kitana, and he has kind of similar role, apart from the fact that he isn't a tank. However, he is a disabler, that's for sure. He has weak on special one and uh, cripple on special two. He cannot really be a great assassin because both of his special attacks can be um, blocked, but he is a decent fighter, especially if you have cornered the enemy. I reckon that um, the basic attacks of Ronin Takeda work really, really great if he has cornered the enemy. And last but not least, what special attacks should you use most of the time? I reckon special one. Of course, special two can be used and it is quite good, but in the general case, special one will be more than enough to finish off an enemy or to weaken the enemy which can save your life once again it can save your life against x-ray it can save your life against special two it drastically reduces the damage taken so in the many many cases once again special one will be more than enough but his biggest strength in a running team and actually everywhere is the fact that he is an awesome disabler. He has weak on special one and cripple on special two. So let's say that you're in a situation when you cannot power drain whoever is the enemy of the enemy team who has x-ray. There is only one option you target Takeda, do special one, weaken the enemy, pray that he's not going to resist the weaken and then eat the x-ray. Of course, this will only work if you have pretty healthy Takeda, but do not underestimate the power of weaken, guys. It can literally save you in many, many situations. When it comes to the equipment, I give him Block Breaker, of course he cannot do well without Block Breaker. In my case, Takeda used to be the opener 90% of the time, so I give him the Ice Bomb. This is 
one of the best if not the best item for any starter it can save your life so many times against anybody against character that can do x-ray against uh, let's say circle of shadow lucane and so on and so forth so this is by far a must for every single starter and i also give another extremely important item to takeda and by the way it only it actually depends on the play style if you want you can give this to kenshi if you want you can give this to kitana and this item is the shadow sash basically what this item does is that together with the intimidating presence talent it makes sure that your block is not going to be broken and that's incredibly important imagine that you're facing jade you try to block and intercept her basic attacks by doing special one but she actually breaks your block on the first mini hit and she destroys you this is never going to happen if you have the shadow sash just block wait for the opportunity do special one special to whatever execute jade this is the way you deal with her and so many other annoying characters and this is the main reason why i believe that this uh, item the shadow sash is a must not only on takira actually once again it depends on the playstyle you can give it to kitana you can do it to kenshi long story short you must have a character whose block cannot be broken especially in a running team when one mistakes means basically All right, guys, it is time to talk about Ronin Kenshi, the best damage dealer in the Ronin team, the absolute beast. Now, what can I say about Ronin Kenshi? First thing first, do not use his special tool. Yes, you heard me, guys. Do not use his special tool unless you are facing uh, MK11 Scarlet or the Terminator with a shitload of health in any other situation. Let's say 90% of the cases you don't require to use special 2 because the damage output of his special 1 is more than enough. You can literally take a maxed out diamond with one single special 1. You do not require to do special 2. So that's something really, really important. Of course, once again, there will be cases where it is better to use special 2. I'm not saying you don't use special 2 at all. There will be cases which will require you doing special 2. But those cases are not really that often. The general case is... Do special one and that's more than enough. If you're worried about the enemy having power or something, just use Kitana to power drain or just use the Kido to cripple or weaken. This is the general case. When it comes to the equipment of Ronin Kenshi, of course, he requires something to break block. And there is one additional thing, actually two things that he requires. The first thing is a rat hammer or any other means that he can start with one bar of power. Why is that important? Because in many cases, uh, the enemy team will have somebody who has x-ray or somebody uh, like uh, mk11 jade or assassin jade that should be executed in the beginning of the game if you have the ice bomb we already talked about it all you have to do is tag in kenshi wait a few seconds because with the ronin team it's really important not to get snared so we have to be able to tag in and out at every single point so wait a few seconds then do special one kill whoever is there or if the enemy starter has a lot of health then just do two, three basic hits and then followed by special one and this will be enough in 95% of the cases. With everything already said done, then you will have one or two seconds to survive before being able to tag out. This is how easy you can destroy the enemy starter if you have the ice bomb on your opener and if you have the rat hammer or any other piece that gives uh, one bar of starting power on Ronin Kenshi. In addition, Ronin Kenshi is kind of uh, squishy, even though he has the second highest toughness in the game. I tried to give him toughness gear, it did not really work well, so I decided that he requires the Living Dead or the Frost Orb. If you have one of those, even in Fusion Zero, it will work. It is some kind of a precaution and something to guarantee that uh, if Raven doesn't trigger, you're not going to die. Because once again, the biggest weakness of the Ronin team is that they don't have any defensive mechanisms and you have to play really, really well. And by the way, when it comes to the uh, specific role that he has in the Ronin team, it is simple. He is a fighter. He isn't an assassin. He isn't disabled or something. He is a pure fighter. And on our ranking, he scored 75 points, which basically means that he's the highest scoring Ronin of the team. So once again, just give Ronin Kenshi something so he can start with extra one extra bar of power. And uh, let's say if, you, if you're facing MK11 Jade and she's a starter, she's going to get frozen, you attack him in, you're going to do special one and you're going to execute her. Remember, especially in the case of MK11 Jade, she has a gold character stats, so she doesn't really excel at high HP or something. With that said, let's take a look at the biggest counters to the Ronin team. Ok, 
Okay guys, after we established the best talents for the running team and we took a look at each and every single one of the running team separately, it is time to discuss the biggest counter for this team, which in my opinion, without any doubts, is MK11 Jade. This character is horrible to face if you are playing the running team. Because what is the greatest counter for MK11 Jade? You just have a lot of power, you just tag in and you have unblockable special attack and you execute her. Problem is you cannot do that with the running team because None of the three characters have unblockable special attacks. So in a way you're caught between a rock and a hard place. So this is the main reason why you require those two items. That's really, really important. The first thing is the Frost Orb. Uh, sorry, not the Frost Orb, but the Ice Bomb. If the enemy Jade is a starter, she's going to get frozen. So all you have to do is tag your Kenshi and execute her with special one. Remember, MK11 Jade, it doesn't matter how annoying she is. She has the stats of a S tier gold card, but she doesn't have the stats of a S tier diamond. So, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, special one of Kenshi will be enough to execute her. However, what do you do if MK11 Jade isn't the starter, then she, she doesn't get frozen in the beginning, even if she has the Ice Bomb, so how do you deal with her? There's two ways. Since you don't have unblockable special attack, you can either wait for her to start hitting you and intercept her in between her basic attacks, or have the perfect timing to do special one or two just at a time when she swings at you, which is extremely difficult to do. And the next thing to do is to start punching her and wait for her block to break so that you can execute her with special one, special two. Both of those approaches are risky. You can get killed. What happens if you miss time or what happens if she breaks your block on the very, on the very first mini hit, uh, on the very first basic hit from her combo? Uh, basically, she's going to break your block, she's going to snare you or just kill you. That's not good. What happens if you start to punching her and you embrace the shadows, she can counterattack and she can destroy you. So how do you deal with her? It is simple. Unless she has two bars of power, and I'm going to talk about what can you do in this situation later, uh, but if she doesn't have two bars of power, you have to tag in the character who has the shadow sash. Reason being, she cannot break your block. So you have to start blocking. She's going to start her combo and then you can intercept it at any moment because once again you have the peace of mind that she cannot break your block and that's really really important however what do you do if she has two bars of power already i mean she can straight ahead do special too in this situation what i usually do is i tag in my ronin kitana or the character who has the living dead ronin kenshi for instance because i know he cannot die but in a lot of cases i i reckon that ronin kitana is the safest choice because uh, mk11 jade usually comes with a lot of uh, critical hits so in the big majority of the cases, she won't really kill you with her special too. Or another thing that you can do alternatively is just to attack um, Ronin Takeda, weaken her and then wait for her special too. Again, it won't be deadly. Of course, if you have uh, pretty good health, that's really, really important. So basically, this is the way you deal with MK11 Jade. There are other characters that are annoying to deal with, such as Classic Lucane, MK11 Cabal. But once again, I reckon that the biggest threat to the running team is MK11 Jade. She's really, really horrible to deal with. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how this thing works in practice. So I'm going to walk you to one battle against the MK11 team so you know how uh, the thing works. Currently I have the Ice Bomb, so the enemy, enemy MK11 Scorpion is going to get crippled. I'm tagging in Kenshi and I wait. It is extremely important not to start punching immediately. I wait so that I have the most time possible, the least time possible, until the next time comes when I uh, when I can actually tag out. I'm doing special one, 85% of the minigame is important, then I block. And you can see, he breaks my block, but I can now tag out. And I have my Takeda, remember. The block of Takeda cannot be broken. Currently, I decided to do something stupid, so I released my block. But in the general case, this Cabal cannot break my block. Look at this. I'm holding block. I know he cannot break it, and I'm doing special one, which is going to weaken him in the process. And now uh, I kind of made a mistake, but it doesn't matter because I can. Uh, I have pretty good chance of surviving against this um, against this Jade. Remember, Kitana has the highest toughness in the game and she has a lot of toughness here, so Jade cannot really deal a lot of damage to her. Look at this, when she crits, she crits for 88k. At this point, I am perfectly safe. Uh, Kitana, I'm sorry, not Kitana, but uh, Jade cannot really kill my Kitana. Uh, and now the only problem is this Cabal, who is going to do 
uh, unfortunately for me he's going to do x-ray then he's going to do special too but thanks to the fact that kitana is really really tough girl she's going to survive his x-ray and he she's going to survive his special too once again the highest toughness in the game and she has nothing but toughness equipment and her fan that actually gives um chance to heal on special one now i'm going to block his special one i am slowed it's really really difficult but i'll be able to pull that off mk11 cabal goes down and this is the way how you defeat mk11 team with mk11 jade so for the second gameplay i have for you i have prepared probably my hardest battle against mk11 team in the beginning i tag in kenshi i wait a little bit then i start my combo doing special one knowing that this special one should be enough unless he get uh, an x-ray and disaster the mk11 scorpion gets an x-ray and then i did a huge mistake i tried to punch him to finish him off however he was faster and from here on disaster special one on my takira followed by another special one of my takira so he survived by uh i was really lucky here that i have to block this jade remember my takira has the shadow sash so, so his block cannot be broken i'm trying to power drain jade then she's going to break my block uh thankfully i have high toughness and also i have the um killer jacket so i have the shield now and i will try again to power drain jade uh, however disaster this guy has maxed out our equipment that's not really cool she's going to do special two to my kitana but look at this her special two doesn't really deal a lot of damage to my kitana remember jade has gold character stats and if you have high toughness like kitana jade here cannot really deal crazy damage to you however my kitana is in a lot of trouble because mk1 scorpion is back i have to kill him and the best way to do this at this particular point is kenshi and then i'm going to block but Kabao has special two, which is unblockable. So what can I do? What can I do? He blocks my special one, and then he's going to do special two, almost killing my uh, running uh, Kenshi in the process. My running Kenshi is at 38,000 health. What can I do now? I'm talking to Kitana. I'm trying to buy some time. Remember, my Kitana is a very, very tough girl. She doesn't really take a lot of damage. And if you do little hits, she's going to get her uh, killer jacket trigger. That was pretty cool. And I have bone shield. I wait for her to do another thing because she can always counter attack with her passive. That's really, really annoying. And she evades again. Just look at this. Really, really difficult. What can I do now? Thankfully, another killer jacket. That was really, really insane lucky. And another evasion. I'm getting lucky and he's getting lucky or she whoever has this account and now this was disaster because she's going to do special too but i have the living dead so i'm going to survive this a uh, good thing is that i snared uh, i actually blocked the snare so my kenshi isn't snared if my kenshi was snared i was a dead guy and now kitana against jade again look at this her critical hits the critical hits of jade da, uh, do like 100 damage on kitana so that's pretty pretty impressive now jade is going to eat an x-ray finally and uh, sooner or later she goes down because both of her te uh, teammates are dead and now ronin takira comes back to the fight almost full hp special two and down goes mk11 jade as you can see matches again against the mk11 team can be extremely extremely difficult with the running team and i was saved but thanks to the fact that i have a high fusion um, killer jacket and thanks to the fact that i had the living dead uh, two uh, tower pieces that are epic but after all uh, the enemy i faced also had tower pieces so it was kind of equal Alright guys, it is time to decide whether the running team is good, which are the strengths of this team, which are the weaknesses. We are going to start with the fact that those three guys combined have 219.5 out of 300 points based on their reviews, which are, I reckon, up to date, so no need to do any adjustments. In addition, they have really strong synergy. After all, even if you don't give them anything that boosts their damage, if they are together in a team, they deal insane amount of damage to the enemy team and that's a fact however uh basically these are the i would say the only two good points about the team they scored kind of okay uh in the reviews nothing exceptional but still okay and the synergy between them is really really strong however every single one of them not really great outside of running team they can be useful but not great and this brings me to the worst part of the running team and this is the fact that not only that they're not really great outside of the running team after all i'm doing a review of the running team so the drawback of the running team is the fact that it's not safe to play you have to be really really uh, focused when you're playing with your running team one mistake and you're gone so 
there is nothing there to save you, right? Even if you are playing Ronin Kitana for toughness and stuff, you require certain items, you know, to be, let's say, uh, relatively calm when you're playing with a Ronin team. You have so many bone shields, uh, any type of items that can bring uh, the enemy back. Uh, you have the Revenant and so on and so forth. So the Ronin team has a lot of problems against that and they are not really good at taking damage apart from Ronin Kitana. So this is the reason why it's really important to have the Shadow Sash. This is the reason why it's important to boost Kitana's toughness so that you can kind of compensate for the fact that the Ronin team doesn't have any safety mechanisms. Nothing. They don't have shields like the Cold War team. They don't have uh, MK11 uh, Sub-Zero in MK11 team. You got my point, right? So the safety, the worst thing when it comes to Ronin's. When it comes to the game modes, where they shine and where they don't shine, I reckon they don't really shine in survival mode if, and once again, if you don't have good gear to give them. I'm not saying that they can do it, they can, but there are other teams out there that they can do it much safer and better than the running team. So if you want to be, let's say, wreaking havoc in uh, faction or survival mode by using runnings, you need to have some pretty, pretty good gear in order to do that. It's not, I'm once again not saying that you cannot do it with weak equipment, you can, but there's a big chance that you're going to get wrecked. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. Uh, and sadly, this thought leads me to the other. They're kind of item dependent. You need to have good items for defense. If you don't have the good items to defense, once again, it's not impossible to do certain things, but you're going to have issues. So uh, the more good items you have, the better the running team gets. And in terms of the team being easy to max out, I would say that they're just okay, average. They don't excel at being easy to be maxed, but they're not really, really difficult. Like, for example, the horror team, which is literally available once per year. So this is not the case for Ronis. Not the easiest team to max out, such as, for example, MK11, but definitely not the hardest one. And in my subjective feelings guys i don't really enjoy playing the running team even though i like running kitana running kenshi not really a fan of running takeda i admit that this team can work it is not really a trash team definitely it's not a trash team and i can understand people who have fun with it because the damage output is incredible but once again why does it matter in survival mode right uh, the reason why i'm giving 50 points is that they're not really that great in survival mode and i think that they're better uh, against bosses compared to how good they perform in survival mode. So 50 out of 100 is like uh, fair because I gave the same score for the assassins. Assassins not really that great against bosses, better in survival mode compared to Ronin's. So in general, yes, I think that they're good, but they have a lot of um, defensive issues. So compared to the other teams, not really that great. And I don't really have fun playing Ronin's quite honestly. So I'll be giving them 20 out of my 100 subjective points. And at the end of the day, the Ronin team scored 579.5 out of 1000 points, or in other words, let's say 5.8 out of 10. Basically, the Ronin team is a good team, but definitely I wouldn't say that it is one of the very best diamond teams in the game. They just lack defense, and that's really, really sad. If they had one extra member that could boost their defense in any way, they would be much, much better better. Now, I also asked you in Discord, what do you think about the Ronin team vote? And the average vote that you gave the Ronin team is 7.1. So in a way, you rated the Ronin team higher than the Matrix. And I kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of in between. I think that the Ronin team is something about 6.5. Really, really good at certain game modes, in certain boss fights, they might be really great. But in general, for survival mode, you really need to play really good, you know, to pull off an Elder Tower. You need to have very good strategy and very good gear. Without it, I don't say it's impossible, but it's really, really hard compared to other teams. Alright guys, so I'm going to end this video with a gameplay footage. Basically, I recorded my last four or five games from the Elder Tower using the Ronin team. I really hope you're going to enjoy it. See you next time, guys. Take care and stay safe.
intense. Which one of us is blind? Well done. to watch. Which one of us is blind? You're done.
intense. Which one of us is blind? Perfect.